Even as talks of war ending between Ukraine and Russia are gaining momentum, civilian casualties continue to mount. A theater in Mariupol, which was sheltering over a thousand civilians, was bombed by Russia. However, Russia has denied targeting civilians. It has, in fact, accused a far-right Ukrainian militia of blowing up the theater. Meanwhile, in another horrific attack, U.S. Embassy in the capital, Kiev, claimed that several people queuing up for bread in the northern city of Chernihiv were shot dead by Russian troops. So the sirens blaring out of Kiev and uh, I am now joined on the broadcast by my colleague Pradeep Datta who's been reporting live from Ukraine ever since the war started between Russia and Ukraine. Pradeep, uh, even as we talk about uh, this war probably ending, the situation in the ground, on the ground really, uh, you know, tell a different story. What is it that you're reporting from out of uh, Ukraine? Yes, you're absolutely right. In fact, the situation seems to be deteriorating with each passing day. What really happened in Mariupol, I think no civilized nation will ever do that. Though Russia continues to remain in a denial mode, saying that we are not at all involved in bombing or targeting civilians. That's what they have been doing from day one. But I had been covering, in fact, Ukraine. I'd seen that many of the civilian installations had been targeted. At this time, they targeted theater, where more than 2,000 people had taken shelter, which included women, children, and some of the women were in a family way. That's what the Ukrainian authorities right now are saying. They are saying that we are yet to count uh, how many people really got killed in this attack by uh, Russia. But Russians, in fact, are blaming the Ukrainians for that, as I uh, al always say. Truth is always the first casualty during war. And here in this war also, we find that truth is the first casualty. Each side continues to blame other for whatever wrong happens. But here in this case, we have seen that the Russians have not only targeted people in Mariupol, but also in Chernihiv, while the people were waiting outside in a long queue for the bread, they were also targeted. And uh, in, uh, over the last uh, few days, I had been covering several locations where we have seen many of those civilian buildings have been brought down. A number of deaths, if you see, it has increased. It's just more than 3,000 as per the United Nations figure, which includes more than 50 children. They have died. Three million people have already then already been rendered homeless because of this shelling bombing by Russian troops. And uh, 75,000 children are among those uh, people rendered homeless. And number is going to ri rise in coming days. And what I've uh, been told that uh, uh, more than 1.8 million people have entered Poland. And Poland is the one country that has got maximum of the refugees. And so now the problem is of the accommodation there. The people are not getting accommodation. Most of them are staying at railway station out in open. So they are. that's the only place where they can stay. So there's a lot of problems these refugees are facing. One, they're, they're uh, homeless. Uh, second, there is a lot of uncertainty, no know where to go. And third is that, again, a psychological disorder, like post-traumatic uh, stress disorder cases are also are rising. Many of the people, there are a lot many anxiety cases that both the doctors who are attending, some of them are saying. And then they are not get, getting those basic amenities, like medicine is not available to them. Uh, many of them are, in fact, starving for food. Uh, Ukraine considered to be the bread basket of Europe. Uh, where, uh, what can be more painful when you see people they are starving for food they are not getting one time meal properly so those are the problems right now being faced by the people on ground but on the other hand if you look at the uh, developments in the during the last 24 hours international court of justice have also profoundly expressed concern over whatever over the development yes. in the uh, uh, ukraine and they've asked the russians to halt operations they've told them uh suspend your all military operations in that area mm. though these are uh, rulings or budget is a binding on a country but uh, uh, international court of justice 
Russia has no means to enforce Russia to stop all these things. So far, the Russians have not agreed mm. to because they are totally eyeing at their political objective and their political objective is simply to change the regime and uh, overthrow uh, Zelensky and have somebody who is their puppet who is taking care of their interests in that region. And uh, second is that they want the Ukrainian army to come on knees. But the only silver lining in this, all this uh, um, uh, bloodshed and bloodbath that's going on in Ukraine is that the both the countries are talking to each other, though they are saying the talks uh, this time. The Russia was a little bit realistic in the approach. Uh, they may be heading towards something. But yes, what is more important is ceasefire on ground is really important. Humanitarian corridors need to be provided so that civilians can be uh, shifted from one place to another. I think that's what actually the need of an art, because civilians are the one who are facing brunt of shelling, especially women and children. They are suffering a lot. And one gets a heart gets filled with pain when you see the sufferings of the people there on ground, the humanitarian crisis and the catastrophic situation right now that's staring at Ukraine. Right. Uh, Pradeep, the fact that you mentioned uh, the International Court of Justice ordering Russia to stop all military action and uh, whether that is done on ground or not, we can't really say. However, we've seen that Russia has brazened it out. They have called their military operations a success. That is the amount of brazening that we've seen on ground. On that uh, note, where there are peace talks also happening, also a tentative peace plan that has been actually drawn, which talks about, uh, you know, Ukraine leaving uh, the NATO ambitions all of that is also happening. How successful do you think uh, these peace plans will really happen? Will go forward? Uh, will they, will these uh, really be? See, if you look at already. We have seen that Zelensky has mellowed down. In fact, four or five days back, he had sent an indicator that they are no more interested to be part of NATO. What actually the Russians had been looking at, they wanted a, some kind of a legal document and um, a clear-cut indication that uh, NATO will not mm. be including Ukraine and do, do not want uh, Ukraine to be part of the NATO. And they want basically Ukraine to be a buffer zone because they feel that once the NATO forces will be there, they will be having their footsteps and the foothold in that region, then it's going to have an effect on the Russian security. But uh, over the period of time, we have seen that despite assurances being given by um, uh, the West also, assurances being given by Zelensky also, uh, the bombardment of that area continues. That means the political objective is bigger. Political objective of Russia is they want to overthrow Zelensky's yeah. regime. They want to have a puppet government, the one who is going to look after their interests. That's one of the reasons that despite International Court of Justice, despite talks, the bombing and other things are continuing, and civilians are continuing to face brunt. Many of the buildings we are covered, we are targeted by Russian rockets because they are yet to mm. occupy Kyiv. Even after uh, four weeks, uh, they are still uh, at the doorsteps of Kyiv. They are not able to enter. Reason being uh, that every time they have tried, their casualty has been inflicted. Reason uh, that uh, they have committed some of those tactical blunders initially because their tracks were bunched together. So they became easy ducks for, uh, like uh, sitting ducks for um, uh, Ukrainian drones. Many of those visuals had already been there on Miranau, where we have shown that how the Ukrainian drones are able to blow uh, some of those Russian tanks. Uh, so that's, uh, in fact, a matter of concern for Russia also. They have to answer these questions at the domestic level that what they really achieved even after four weeks, they are not able to enter mm. Kyiv because initially it was considered to be kind of a, they had been telling that it will be a kind of a cakewalk. And they underestimated, I think, the spirit of Kyiv, the uh, spirit of Ukraine. Uh, they underestimated that, which I think in war nobody should do. Mm. And it's going to be a prolonged war going to be more of suffering and many of the cities are still besieged and how to take out those civilians that's a million dollar question and i think that's what actually the world community should be concerned about and west is to be equally blamed because they also had been looking after their interests not looking after the interests of the ukraine which ukraine have now realized that at the end of the day they are the only one who are fighting war west dished afghanistan same way they have dished ukraine also but now they are only uh, geostrategically they will be benefited and selling their arms the arms race has already started and nuclear race has also started in this region, that region which used to be once very peaceful. Right. Uh, also, Pradeep, the fact that U.S. has ended up giving that kind of aid to Ukraine, uh, will it not uh, help in building their military muscle also? Because we are talking about a huge amount uh, that has been actually assured by U.S. President Joe Biden. See, you rightly said that $800 billion aid, which actually Joe Biden, the U.S. president, has promised to Ukraine. We have already seen that uh, there had been a warning from the Russian side. They are saying that the U.S. US and other Western countries should stop meddling into Ukrainian affairs because if you will start providing the military muscle or you will start providing them more arms and ammunition, and that way you will also be, uh, you will become the part of the war and you will also have to pay consequences. We saw that just four days back. 
What was the reason that the military base in uh, uh, west of uh, Ukraine was targeted? In which 35 of the soldiers died. They said that uh, there were some of those volunteers who had come from yes. Western countries. They were also under training along with the Ukrainian forces. Uh, though the Ukraine have denied so far, but yes, we had also been able to interact with some of those volunteers who had been here. Uh, they would be fighting on side with the Ukrainian forces. But I think this is going to further increase chaos, confusion, because human humanitarian aid is one thing military aid is something else and this may be providing that muscle to ukraine but it's not going to buy peace for them it is further going to prolong the war that is continuing here in this region. Hmm.